I think that, uh, uh, fortunately, it was Poland and Poles who started to make the beginning of the end of communism. I, I tried to describe how long was our struggle. Of course, our struggle was not the most bloody, but not by chance. We were called the most enjoyable barrack in the camp, but that's because even Stalin was saying that communism for Poles is as a settle for a cow. That it doesn't, it doesn't work with Poles to, 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 to the, the fact that in Poland, Poland was the only country in which agriculture wasn't collectivized wasn't transformed into Kolkos totally, was not because Stalin was so tolerant or his governor for Poland, Bierut, was so tolerant, but, but because it wasn't feasible. There's always a balance between the profits and the costs. So I am defending since years the idea to transform Palace of Culture, which is this boot, Stalin's boot, put in the center of Warsaw. Uh, there's a concrete desert, because that's not a defilade square, that's a desert. And in the middle of it, there's this palace of culture. Uh, by the lack of knowledge of history of art, protectors of listed monuments put this building into the list. That's not a piece of art as architecture. That's rather a document as Auschwitz barracks or Dachau camp. But I think there's one big value of this building. This building is representing the spirit of communism. Leviathan had to have something gigantic, something extremely eccentric, something terrorizing in form and in the scale. So I think this building is fantastic piece of totalitarian architecture. We don't need, as in Holocaust Memorial Museum in Washington, which is a building built in, referred to the style of Auschwitz barracks and Auschwitz gates and Auschwitz lamps. We don't need it. We need just to reinterpret this building. Just show how the facade is different from the caves in which uh, Polish national heroes were tortured and murdered. So using the entrance space to this building and creating an underground freedom forum with former, uh, former uh, how you say, tribune, tribune for leaders, dismantled and set up again on this Freedom Forum. And having a movie with communist leaders saluting crowds of uh, uh, manifestations 24 hours a day, we can create this, this, this contrast between the facade and the hidden struggle with uh, those who were for independence and for democracy and for freedom. We can create this counterpoint between official vision of communism and hidden struggle against it. We have a joke, what's the nicest place in Warsaw? That's the top of Palace of Culture because we don't see Palace of Culture from this top. So there are so many jokes about this building and the question of this building is as a challenge of totalitarianism. That's a question of temptation of scale. What was Poland under communism? It was one single enterprise. What was a political system? All those, this ruling party with so-called free satellites. What was independence in Poland? In Poland, which lost independence. When Mr. Jaruzelski as ruling general and, and uh, uh, general secretary of Communist Party declared martial law, he told us with this 
fantastic Soviet refreshing hypocrisy that he is defending independence of Poland. So against whom? Against Russians, but he didn't mention. He is still saying that Russia wanted to attack us. When now we know from archives of Politburo that they didn't want because they had him at place. He was ready to do everything to be at power. And that's what we called this, uh, this, uh, that this, this lie, permanent lie mentioned by Solzhenitsyn, which is the base for, of the system. That's why falsification of the values, the imitation of the real, real virgin economic and political system is this killing factor for freedom. Each falsification of the word, of the image, of the name, of the tradition is a real danger, is a real danger for freedom. But to come back to real sense of the words, to real meaning, to real notions, we have to work hard because this falsified vocabulary is the biggest danger. That's why I put into my new manual Freedom a do-it-yourself manual, the short vocabulary of freedom. Because I think, discussing with Belarusians, Cubans, Russians, some Chinese dissidents, that the question is to what extent they internalized the vocabulary of freedom. Not as slogans, but understanding that there's a hard work to do when we want to be just normal.